Footage Online, the Motion Picture Library. Hello and welcome to the first tutorial of Footage Online. I'm Thomas Pohl and try to hide my German accent, which obviously does not work too good. Nevertheless, I want to give you an insight into Red CineX. This is a free program from Red, which is programmed to handle R3D files. The clips in our library are available in standard SD and HD format, but also R3D RAW files and Many do not even know how to deal with these raw files and that's why we want to show you with this little workshop how simply it actually is, at least in the first steps, to work with the program Red CineX. Red CineX can be downloaded free of charge, so therefore we go to the Red homepage at red.com support, you'll find several softwares including Red CineX. Please do not be confused about the better version, this is almost a kind of quotation marks tradition at RED, only in better stage. So please don't be irritated, we have very good experience with it. I recommend you to keep up to date at redusers.net because CineX is updated very often. The program is available for Windows on Mac computers and after you've downloaded and unzipped it, it is simply thrown in the program folder and then it's already operational. Well, so let's open Red Cine X. On the right we see color correction parameters with curves and some other parameters known from other video editing softwares. Here in the middle you can arrange other windows to your demands. Down here we have a timeline, also known from other softwares. Red Cine X is a fairly complex program, so first of all in this workshop we want to show you only the basics. First we import some R3D files into the bin at the left side. These are all clips from our library of course, aviation footage, politicians, our cancellor Miss Merkel, a helicopter, a cow and some other nice works. Well, let's open the viewer to see the preview of the clips. I recommend you to enlarge the viewer to full screen when working with two screens. In CineX you can choose between different resolution settings to play the footage with a full frame rate, no matter which system you're working with. The full resolution debayering results in enormous computing power even on fast machines. There's for example an 8th resolution and as you can see the slow-mo footage is played relatively smoothly. But to make grading I recommend to choose the full resolution so you can see every detail. First we like to do the pre-creating. The pre-creating is important for example to adapt the footage to our project and because each piece had its own kind of aesthetic and you can solve that already in the pre-creating. There are parameters that we don't know from other editing softwares, for example Kelvin, ISO settings and so on. The special feature of the R3D files from RED is that all the parameters are saved non-destructive, unlike other cameras. So you can change the settings and the color mood afterwards. And uh, that's the reason why we have also specialized with footage online on the shoot with the RED one. Because you have, beside the huge resolution, the possibility to do color corrections which are impossible with other formats. The R3D files have a color depth of 12-bit. For comparison, DSLR cameras are saving their recordings with 8-bit color depth. Therefore 12-bit gives you of course a very different possibility to color correct the footage. Maybe you can tease out details in the highlights and shadows which weren't visible before. Ok, let's turn to some parameters. Kevin, for example to add the fire a bit more red. Here are the ISO settings, so if you want to brighten up for example the whole thing. Of course you can change the contrast too if you want to get rid of the background. You can also adjust the curve to make the footage more brilliant or crash the shadows. And this look can be saved. For this we press the plus right here and a new preset appears. We can call it for example Fire03. Now it's ready to be applied to other clips. Here is a preview button to apply the preset temporary and with the apply button you can apply the new presets to other clips. Now let's look to another important basic function, cutting a clip by using in and out points. Therefore you can use the timeline in the viewer window. 
First select the frame that should be the in point. Then you click the button right on the left of the viewer and the clip is cut at the beginning. Then choose the out point and click the button on the right to cut the clip at the end. In this context it makes sense to change the time indicator, maybe to TC for displaying the hours, minutes, seconds and the frames. But at this point stop with the other parameters of the post-processing in Red X and we want to turn to the export functions because, well, it's a basic workshop. Um, with the export we create different formats and codecs out of the R3D file. With the export tab at the lower left we can open the export window with a preset list. If you've never saved an export preset, these settings of course don't exist. That means you have to build one yourself. Just press the plus button and a window with the export settings pops up. Now you can name the preset and adjust the settings. Here we choose our format in which we want to export. For example, there are TIFF and DPX sequences for high-end cinema movies or ambitious post-processing. If you want to work in a normal editing program, then you should work with a container and codec which works great on your editing software and corresponds to your target format, well, mostly QuickTime. In the setup menu you can choose several codecs. Here, for example, ProRes 4x4. It's of course rather for the Mac users because it's nearly only writable on Macs, but that's the codec we prefer because it allows 12-bit color depth. On Windows, Photo JPEG for example works fine too. Now we're more or less finished with the setup. Just choose the requested resolution. With the debayer settings you can adjust the debayering quality. The better the quality, the longer it takes to export of course. In this case I would recommend to export the whole thing with full because it's a 2K slow-mo converted to 1080p. If you have 4K raw material, half premium for a 1080p could be probably enough. Here you decide where the file is going to be saved. With the audio settings you can activate or deactivate the audio channels. Here you can even add a watermark, but again, we don't want to discuss this in detail. We select the preset we have created and the footage which is to be exported. With this tab only the selected file would be exported. It's also possible to export all clips which are in the bin. Now we go to export. Again a window pops up where we can choose the path, maybe the desk for reasons of clarity and save the whole thing. Now you can stare all the time at the progress bar or go for a coffee. Well, I hope I gave you a first impression about the handling of R3D files. I'm sure you want to try the red workflow by yourself and probably you don't have R3D material yet. So we have uploaded for you a R3D test file on footage-online.de free of charge. And here we have again some technical informations also about different file formats and the integration into the own workflow. So now, thank you for your attention, we are pleased to suggestions and if you want to tell us what you are interested in or perhaps an idea what the next tutorial could be about, we are looking forward to get an email at info at footage-online.de. And now, enjoy the cutting and editing. See you! Footage Online, the motion picture library.